Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? I mean, the beer we got drank pretty good, don't it? Hello, welcome to Your Beer Sex. I'm John, that's Andrew, that's Miguel Sanchez. Let's drink beer. What have we got? For Parish, beer one? Parish Ghost in the Shell. Ooh, welcome to the future. The future? Yeah, you know, like flute album. That's a pretty good idea for a flute album. Yeah. Can you play the flute? No. Well, John, you can, can you play the but flute? Anyone no. can play the recorder. True. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's... Um, it's not a flute. Man's got a, a point, recorder. but that's, yeah. Yeah, but you know who's not going to know that? The idiots buying it. Showing the people going, look at this fucking title. <laughs> do, you think that, do you think that somebody who actually plays flute will see Welcome to the Flute Show and go, Yeah, I know this is bullshit. I'll let the Rubes <laughs> buy it. <laughs> I, I hope so, and I hope I hope through some sort of misadventure we end up becoming good friends with said flautist. <laughs> Never thought I would get to say that flautist on camera. <laughs> Did you just like key that whole bit so you'd be able to work that word in? Yeah. Well done. Our collective human consciousness, or ghost in the shell, has gained a tolerance for hops beyond what mankind has ever. Oh, it sounds bad already. <laughs> this double India Pale Ale. Is the necessary outcome brewed with obscene quantities of hand selected <laughs> citra hops from our favorite farm in Yakima Valley, Washington? Oh man, this is this is like your favorite beer. This is this is your beer. I'm gonna go ahead and this is the first time I've ever done this. I'm gonna go ahead and give this sucks. Oh yeah, just like yeah. right now. It's a double IPA. I'm gonna it call looks it foggy too. I'm Look how call foggy it. that is. My um, roommate has been hyping up this beer. Isn't his taste notoriously shite? We well, I mean. Uh, that probably is a bit much for Mike. Yeah. Come to think of it, we'll give him, like, that much. Because we That's already probably know. still too much for Mike. Probably. Oh, my word. The bouquet is positively garish. <laughs> All right. Let's see. How does it smell? Uh, citra hops. Garish. <laughs> oh, God, it smells really good. <laughs> citra, it smells also it like... It smells a, like citra hops rubbed into a sweaty armpit. It smells like Amarillo also. Yeah. It's very juicy smelling. It's a... Uh, oh, man, this thing is super foggy. Super foggy. It smells like grapefruit juice. It looks like grapefruit juice. Onions, apples. <sighs> I do sort of get the onions a little I bit. I do, but I don't get apples. I don't get the apples. Like red onions almost? Yeah. That's a thinner mouthfeel than I was expecting. This is a double? Double IPA. Imperial IPA. Could have fooled me. You know. Yeah, how does it have that little body? This isn't terrible. Bottle. Look, it's not even that old. Bottles it's, and... I think this is fantastic. If it just is thin bodied. Yeah, this is, it's not as, I but, mean, I'm figuring, you know, double imperial IPA. I figure it's going to have at least some kind of. It's nutty. Girth. And it's juicy, like juice juicy. Yeah, it's very, like. I don't want to say it's because the hops are there and you know it's obviously a beer, but mm -hmm. in terms of. Mouth feel and the flavors going on in the palate. Juicy is the adjective that I would use to describe this beer. It's I think a big part of that is how sweet it is for an IPA. Mm. And I'm getting also like some things that you don't normally get in them, like a, a lemon zest. Yeah. Nuttiness. I, and nuttiness, yeah. That's generally like a porter or stout kind of a thing. I think that's coming from. Or at least like a red ale thing. Yeah. I think that's just coming from the fact that it's an imperial IPA. It probably has a little bit more malt and barley in there. It has there. a little bit more impure in it. Impure, yeah. yeah. I'm getting some other fruit stuff, too, like just like really deep in it. Uh, 
like apricots and yeah. This is very, very, very fruity beer. This is actually a good IPA. Wow. And you said it sucks. You were going to give it a... I don't know. I already put in my vote. <laughs> but just so you know, I think it's pretty good. You know, just change your vote. Whatever, man. <laughs> After the fact. No, this is this is very good. Yeah. it's And, and it's... I guess... When did I you join the say... GOP? <laughs> oh, uh-huh. it's funny because it's true. Yeah, Oof. first political commentary on the show, but poignant and relevant. I don't think it's the first. I think it's the first that's been that direct. Yeah, yeah. that's very yeah. like fuck them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to say that I'm disappointed that it doesn't have like a bigger mouth feel, but. I am a little bit. I'm disappointed that it's not a better style of beer, but it is excellently crafted. I was going to say, it's very well crafted and it's very good for what it is, I think. It's you know just... what this is? This is a great ska album. A great 90s ska album. Ooh. I don't know if that exists. Yeah. Well, there's got to be... I mean... We may have never heard of it. There yeah, had to there somebody. Has to be. Yeah. I mean, somebody had to have still been doing like two tone then. Right, you know? right. Yeah. There's great late seventies and early eighties ska. There is some Somewhere great there was modern a guy. ska. But man, nineties sure were the fucking wilderness, weren't they? Somewhere there was a guy that was like totally bald on top but still had a ponytail mm-hmm. and he was fucking he was rocking that shit. Oh yeah. Wait, I'm pretty sure Specials did release an album in the nineties. That's probably it. Yeah. There we go. Well, and there's that little-known Smashing Pumpkins Sky album. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's what's that called? I don't know. Gish. Uh, <laughs> Gish. <laughs> so this beer doesn't suck. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, Parish Brewing Ghost in the Machine. Ghost in the Shell. I kind of like Ghost in the Shell better. We should we should write to them on that. Yeah, Ghost in the Shell. I like Ghost in the Machine. That was, something. A, that was a really good police album. Yeah. Police. Yeah, Ghost in the Machine or Synchronicity? Oh, between the two of them, that's hard. I know. I think Ghost in the Machine is the the better album from beginning to end. Like it's more consistent. Yeah. But the highs, the high points on Synchronicity are way higher. I'm gonna start playing fretless bass and singing falsetto. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I don't know anything about music. <laughs> Beer <laughs> number two, Schneider Weisse Tap Seven, mine original, mine original, mine original, mine. It's the art of brewing in its purest form for true wheat beer connoisseurs. Us. Mine original, the traditional wheat beer brewed on altered in accordance with the original recipe of George I. Schneider since 1872, and since then simply marquee of a deep amber color, harmonically balanced and strong. That's what Bavaria tastes like. That's also what coming home tastes like in the comfort of your own four walls as well as at your convivial. Convivial? What the fuck? That, there's another one of those fucking English degrees. Mm-hmm. Convivial. Mm-hmm. Stamtisch. Stamtisch. I have no idea what the fuck that Stamtisch. is. Stamtisch. Mm. Yeah. Stamtisch. Or Stamtisch. Say it like Arnold. Stomptish. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is a beer. It kind of looks like butt. It looks macro. I'm scared. Me too. I bet it's a bit smell, dark. I bet it macro. smells macro. It does. Does it smell macro? Hmm. Hmm. It's got. It's got that macro grape smell. Weird. A little bit. Does have the macro, but I was gonna say if there's some funk there, it's not. But super... it's also smoky on the nose. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm getting a little of the grape, but it's very weedy smelling. Yeah, and very smoky. Maybe that's just the yeah. yeah. Maybe. maybe it's maybe that's just very like, smoky. This 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 it's beer kind of smells dark. like a, a house fire. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, does. I hate to say it. I would love to say it smells like hickory, but it actually it smells, like, smells a like a house fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It smells a lot like a house fire. <laughs> yes, it does. Yep. You are so nice to you. Yeah. This actually... Okay. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. It's real lightly flavored. Very weedy. Well, not really very weedy. Very weedy compared to everything else in it, but it's lightly flavored, so it's not very anything. I do kind of get the smokiness there on the back end. What a weird carbonation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. It's kind of harsh, but the bubbles feel really tiny like in um, nitrogenation. Bacon on the finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that smoke is there. Well, not just smoke, but... Bacon. Specifically, if you ask me, bacon. Yeah. The body is pretty thin, though. Fat back. Yeah. Hmm. It's got a little bit of Band-Aid happening there, too. It's not a bad beer. No. But it's not, it's not close to a Ventanist. You know what? No. Nah. The palate on this beer sucks, but the finish is good. Yeah. I wouldn't even say that the, that the palate sucks. It's just... Unremarkable. It's just... Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> The nose is okay. The palate's okay. The, the finish, finish is... Ah. Okay. <laughs> it makes it sort of worth drinking that way. All right. I mean, the finish is what you're left with. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, okay, I'll keep drinking this. I mean, like, you're sort of being coerced into it. Yeah. Because it's not like, well, the actual taste of the beer isn't that great. It doesn't smell that great, but... What happens after I drink it's pretty cool. Mm. So, fuck you, Schneider. It's clever. Um, now, I think this deserves a mixed verdict. I was going to say... I think this deserves a one and a half sucks. One and a half doesn't suck. Um, it, it's not possible for us to go straight down the middle on that. It's got to be either... So just give your honest opinion. Mike, you first. What is, that? is that called sagittal? Is that wrong? If I were to cut you like that, I don't know the right term. Though. I don't either. I, I don't, what were you asking me? What's your verdict on this beer? Mm-hmm. <sighs> your face says sucks. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. Mm. Yeah. What's your verdict? It's gonna be mediocre. Mm-hmm. Plus point five. Oh jeez! That pushes it over the edge. <laughs> pushes it over the edge. It's enough. I mean, there's nothing real offensive about it, and I do like the finish. So I'm gonna say doesn't suck. I'm gonna come down on the side of doesn't suck because oh, it's God. not a bad beer. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like it's it's not a. And bad I don't beer. think it's mediocre. I think it's it's pleasant enough. I think the biggest thing is that it's incredibly disappointing compared to other shit they make. Oh, yeah. Both of the Aventinus beers that we've had have been mind-blowing. The Ice Block was amazing. I didn't think that you could do better Damn. or that they could do better than a normal one, but the Ice Block was just... Fucking good. Yeah. This is nowhere close to as good, and it is an incredible disappointment. But I've given beers that were not this good a doesn't suck. Emphatically. So... I got to be honest, it doesn't suck. But for its price, I don't recommend it. Yeah. Because it's like five bucks, just like a Ventanus. You can get a Ventanus for $5. Or if you want to be real cheap, go down to that gas station by where Mike lives and buy a big bottle of Snappa for three bucks. Or go to uh, fucking Fresh Market or whatever. No, not Fresh Market. Sprouts. Fucking sprout, fucking sprouts, and then you get a big bottle of get you uh, some grass fed fucking beef. Well, not only that, but get some fucking red stripe. Yeah, and for for cheaper. Mm-hmm. If you're really looking for bang for your buck, this is about as good as red stripe. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, I'd I know go. a lot. Well, I, <laughs> I, I, I almost said a lot of people. I know the the five people who are watching this went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five? Well we actually like Red Stripe. Five? I think we're I think we're down to five. I, I, wouldn't that be up to five? No. 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 We've no. been we've been uh, gradually whittling down our viewers over time. Oh yeah? Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. 
Yeah, it's because we're testing their endurance. Yes. And you're 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 doing a great if job. If you're still Keep here, you're made of iron. You have an incredibly high constitution stat. Yeah. Congratulations. At least 16. Yeah. Oh, at least. Yeah. Probably probably 18. Mm. Yeah, Schneider Weisse, tap 7, mine original. That does not suck. Yep. It does though. Your number the last one. Founders curmudgeon's better half. What tames an old ale like curmudgeon? The tender embrace of oak and sweet maple. That's what. So you're Canadianing it up, huh? Canadianing. Yeah. That's a difficult word to say. Canadianing. Canadianing. The result is curmudgeon's better half harmonious matrimony of our deceptively smooth old ale brewed with molasses and time spent aging in bourbon barrels. That have previously held maple syrup, because all counterparts should be sweet, rich, and utterly delicious. Huh. Well, we'll see. So, curmudgeon went to shit the know, last year that some, they made let's it. Let's put some syrup in it. So then, I guess Founders is like, oh, well, hold on. We gotta go, like, remake this shit. So they did, and they came up with this. No, here's what happened. They're like, oh, God. People are saying it's not as good. What kind of barrels do we have laying around here? And they're like, we need some barrels stat. All right, the only barrels I could find is a place that had syrup in them. Okay, fuck it. We'll we'll do it. Fuck it. PR departmental. Handle it. It's probably amazing, actually. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll, we'll now, I was going to say, I, do, I still do have some curmudgeon aging, and I'm really, really curious. I won't bother giving Mike extra because he won't drink at all. Mike is, even when he likes the beer, even when he thinks it's a masterpiece, he's not drinking at all because he is... Cutting back on his drinking. I, however, am increasing. It's mine. very, very whiskey on the nose. Very, very whiskey. whiskey. Very whiskey. Very sweet smelling. Very, you know what? It smells like bourbon. Yeah. But it's super complex. Like, see, I'm not getting the grassiness of bourbon. I'm getting like fucking waffle cone. Yeah. And. How puerile. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know me. That's true. Oh, lots of different kinds of bready things and doughy things. What like about bread uh, pudding. Bread pudding, yeah. Dude, have a sip. Okay. Have a sip. Oh, that's super sweet, but it's super good. This is the sweetest beer that I've ever had that I would say is good. Speaking of bread pudding. Yeah, no shit. Oh right. my god, it tastes exactly like really good bread pudding. With raisins. Yeah. yeah. With lots of raisins. Okay. Send us some bread pudding. <laughs> I need to make a spread pudding sometime yeah. with absinthe sauce. You need to make like a absinthe a tray, sauce. A tray like this big. Yeah, oh, catering yeah. tray of bread pudding. Do you it have a catering work. tray? I don't, but I have two full size baking sheets. Then I can do that sometime. Do okay. it. Do it at work. They'll be like, "What are you doing?" Say none of your business. <laughs> none of your fucking. I'll just business. go like this <laughs> and keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah, this beer though, holy shit. There's oh, a lot. There's a lot to unpack here. This is like this is like top ten beer because mm -hmm. yeah. First of all, it's really sweet, like a dessert, but it's also very savory, mm -hmm. and it's all balanced out. It's like the sweet starts to hit you, and you're like, oh god, this is going to be a one dimensional pile of shit. But then it's not. I mean, I don't know what to say other than it tastes exactly like a really good bread pudding. I mean, like a really good one. Yeah. This tastes, would be a fantastic dessert beer. It tastes like it's got Angostura orange bitters in it, too. Like, there's mm. Yeah, on the finish, there's Fuck. like orange uh, zest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it lasts for a while, too. It has a really dry finish. Yeah. It's kind of funny considering just how incredibly sweet the palate is. And then yeah. it's like a super, super dry. There's, there's a lot going on here. It's funny how much more bready the nose is than the palate. Yeah. I mean, it's there on the palate, but on the nose, it's like almost everything is like different kinds of bread and bready things. And whiskey. And whiskey. Yeah, I think their, I think their marketing department needs to really really hype this up as like a dessert beer. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a dessert beer, it's, just to base on so how sweet it is. Because this is the best dessert beer I've ever fucking had. Mm -hmm. Have we ever and done... This is, this is number Speaking one. Speaking of dessert beer... Mm -hmm. 
Have we done the uh, Southern Tier Creme Brulee on the show? Yes, we have. I didn't remember if we did. I think this is probably season better. one or two. Yeah, this is probably better than that. Oh, this it is. is. Yeah, it is. This is. It's a pretty see, distant memory the, for me. Yeah, the creme brulee is really good, but it's really one dimensional. This, this is like twelfth dimensional. This is like this, this. This is M theory. This is probably cracking my top three. Yeah, this is this is an amazing beer. Like mm-hmm. I think I like this more than Backwoods Bastard, and Backwoods I agree. Bastard. I think Backwoods Bastard is in my top three. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, we've updated our top three, but I never updated the website with them. So I'll have to go back and like look at that shit. Is this seasonal? No. Well, I don't know. It's it brand it be a, new. It would be an excellent fall it's season. It's probably beer. seasonal. It's 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 part of their barrel age series. Such a sit by the fire and sip on a rainy day beer, you know. 2018. Uh, we had a fire. I, yeah. I'm going to go probably grab more of this because I bought this with high hopes because I remember our initial reaction to Curmudgeon, I think, really. I think that's really what kick started my interest, especially in beer in this particular style. Old, old ale. ales. We all share old ale as our ultimate favorite style. It's. <sighs> I'll tell you what it's lacking that a normal old ale has, though, but I'm not missing it is the pencil shaving hops. Yeah, it's not there. If it's Fuck. there, it's so mild that like everything else is beating it over the head and saying, "You stay down." Yeah, no. The, the I think the initial sweetness is what's covering that up, at least initially, mm. and then a lot of what else is in the beer, which I'm still trying to unpack, is comes I'm, out, and the finish is great. I'm surprised with how much citrus zest there is. Yes. It's not like the typical, like, hop citrusy thing. Like, I'm really getting tons and tons of orange. I definitely like, get the orange, yeah. And, like, I don't know, maybe even kumquat. That would make it kind of a Christmas beer. Yeah. I'm going to, I got to buy more of this. This. Uh, what do I, I don't, I'm trying to think of my. Of my top three off the top of my head. I think Pumpkin's in there. Backwoods Bastard was in there. I'll tell you what. Who fucking needs curmudgeon anymore? Mm. Yeah, the curmudgeon's better. We got Lady Curmudgeon. She's way hotter. Oh, yeah. For sure. Especially all those chins. Oh, yeah. Oh, god damn. Yeah, right? Like... Yeah, restrain yourself, Mike. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it's it's not even animal it's, attraction. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's no. No, we're even close to a toss up. It's just like yeah, twelve point seven percent alcohol by volume. That's the other thing. It doesn't like it because of the barrel agingness that gives it that um, that bourbon thing. In a way, you can believe it, but in the actual alcohol, like on texture on the palate, you don't get that. I but not... I am getting it in my head because after the, those first two beers, yeah. I was just like, I don't feel shit. And I've had like, just a little bit of see, this, and I'm going. In the picture, yeah, he's eating uh, pancakes. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the thing. I would not pair this beer with an entree. I uh-uh. would no. This is it would overpower it. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's it would be better than the fucking pancakes. I wouldn't even pair this with a d- dessert. I would replace yeah. The yeah, dessert this with this beer. Yeah. Serve it in like port glasses to yeah. like several people at a dinner party. Serve yeah. it in lead steins. Lead steins. <laughs> you'll have a glass, but you'll give all your guests lead steins and then continue feeding it to them and watching them deteriorate over time due to lead poisoning. Mm-hmm. That's clever. I like it. Yeah. That's a good way to go. That's the long con. It is the long con. You're like, I didn't kill them. They were stupid enough to drink it like that. Eventually, it gets easier and easier to beat them out of money. Mm-hmm. Remember, kids, lead is a neurotoxin. It is. It is. This beer, though. Is not... I mean, this beer, I'm sure, is a neurotoxin, but it's... Well, ethanol is. Yeah. It's a liver toxin. <laughs> but it's really good. This beer is It's really, good. really, really, really good. That is good. definitely going up on the cool wall. We do yes. have to... We, that's what I got to do. After this episode, I'm going to do a quick uh, shot of the cool wall. Of the cool wall, yeah, yeah. It's expanded because I've I've <laughs> I've run out of room. That's okay. 
I have run out of room on the cool wall, but that's okay. Yeah, no, Convergence better half the uh, fucking world class beer. World fucking class. World fucking class. This thank, is... uh, thank you, founders, for finally making up for shitty your curmudgeon. Com- because we were so fucking disappointed. <laughs> we got... And this is better than the first convention we ever oh, had. Yeah, but I no. think it is very important that it be understood that it is definitely a dessert beer. If you were coming into this beer expecting like a a, a porter or something like that or no. something along those lines. Or, no. Or even what you would consider a typical old ale. Mm-hmm. You're not getting that with this beer. No. no you're getting I mean, it. it's clearly an old ale. Yeah. But it has a lot of weird qualities that are awesome. Yeah, and, it's, and but and, they are not going to be what you're expecting. And really sweet. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is so weird. Usually, when something's that sweet or anywhere even approaching that, it's just like, okay, this is fucking garbage. But no, no in this case, this it, isn't. It works for this beer. Yeah. Imagine's better half. This beer gets a so. five out of seven. And, and with that, that, it's going to do it for this episode. Perfect five out of seven. Be sure to tune in next time, and just remember, life is too short to be caught drinking shitty beer. Bye. No, I'm going to enjoy some more of that. Okay.